Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Table. I am your host, Captain Beanard, and topic of discussion today is going to be Batman, a power rankings of just about every actor who played Batman in live action. And I say just about because there's an interesting caveat that we'll get to in a second. And here to discuss that with me, returning to the Captain's Table for the 14th time, of course, we have the DC slash Batman superfan, Michelonius. Not only super fan, but I am literally the Batman encyclopedia. So let's get going, bro. Yes, indeed. And returning for the ninth time, another big Batman fan in her own right, we have Feltz Wild. Uh. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, there you go. So, um, <laughs> the yes, another variation of the panel returning to uh, hash this out. So, um. Before we get into the power rankings here, I have a couple of uh, important parameters that I have to go over uh, as to how this list was created. So first and foremost, um, there are a couple of actors who are not going to appear on this list who technically did play Batman in live action. However, it was so long ago that the majority of us didn't know anything about them. Those were, of course, I do know their names, uh, Lewis Wilson and Robert Lowry. Uh, who played Batman in live action back in the 1940s. So I did want to Rest rank them. Peace, both of them. Yes, indeed. So I did want to rank them on this list initially, but unfortunately both myself and Feltz Wild know absolutely nothing about them, so we really couldn't give it a fair shake um, as far as including them. So they're going to be honorable I mean, mentions. I can do a small tribute if you like. That's fine. This is already going to be way too long as is, so it's all good. But uh, <laughs> I already know it's going to happen. But anyway. <laughs> but um, just, just to extend the the fact that that's how far my knowledge goes. yes yes I'll it goes back continue. to i mean my parents weren't even born back then and neither were yours so you know i but you you do know them because that is that is tried and true fandom right there but yes hat tip to them for being that's what you call speaking volumes yes but definitely a big hat tip and honorable mention to them um but we just don't know enough about them to put them on the list so um the rest of the list is going to be the eight other uh actors that play uh batman slash bruce wayne in live action that we know of and so uh yeah we kind of did this the same way that I always do these lists is that uh, we all create our own individual power rankings and then I take all of those rankings and combine them with a uh, general consensus from the internet uh, to go ahead and create the official list for the channel. So um, we're going to read these off um, from worst to first. There are eight names on this list. And of course, when we go through them, we're going to talk about um, what we liked about the character, what we didn't like about uh, how they played the character, um, and then, you know, just pretty much everything surrounding their portrayal of uh, said character. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, so, yeah, so, we're. So, just before we begin, sure. not to cut you off. Good mm. sir, host. Go ahead. Uh, I will say, as the Batman, quote unquote, super fan, yes. um, I agree with this list in ninety percent of its making. Uh, so there, there, you know, there's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because yes. as we start from the bottom up, which is news to me currently. That's the way you um, always do it. There are some people at the bottom that I feel should be much higher. So this is going to get very interesting very fast. All so, right. folks, enjoy this ride. Yes, there you go. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add there, Feltz? There is one name missing on this list, but I will deal with that myself. Yeah, there was somebody else that I didn't know who he was that he plays just Bruce Wayne in something or other. Um, he plays Batman, you just don't see the batman side very often uh, whatever i don't know who you're talking about but nonetheless uh so if, yes we don't know i don't know who that is either so um unfortunately who did she say who what's the Ian name Glenn, he's in titans oh oh you're talking new age i got you yeah yeah that that's where also kevin conroe is in but we'll, we'll cover that later yes so all right anyway yes, yes another enough. honorable saying, another enough. another honorable mention there so there you go um all right, so um, having said all of that, we are going to jump right into it. So um, we're going to start out with number eight on the list. And coming in at number eight, we have George Clooney, who uh, played Batman only one time in the very underwhelming uh, 
some would say, or many would say, flop of a movie, uh, Batman and Robin in 1997. Um, this is... Yeah, so this is uh, not a very controversial thing at all. Uh, Clooney is pretty widely regarded as the worst live-action Batman uh, for a number of reasons by most people. Um, so what I'll say, I don't have too much to say about it, um, but I will say... The, Bro, I didn't, they gave the bat suit nipples. Yeah, so the bat suit was awful. Obviously, the movie itself was uh, was awful. Um, and like George Clooney generally. didn't like act at all in the movie. Yeah, so I was like, gonna say the interesting. He was like just George Clooney. Like he'd walk around. He wasn't he'd be Bruce like, Wayne. He wasn't hey, Batman. He was my George Clooney. Bruce Wayne. But he'd say that the same way as if he was like, "Hey, my name's George Clooney." Yeah, and yeah. then you had the you know. Grab the grenade launcher with the Fraser missile in it. Like, like I don't know, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, no, the the, the Schwarzenegger me? Mr. Freeze was awful. But we're but don't get me wrong. I love Tim Burton, and I love how he tries to bring well, that makes one that of us. comic <laughs> side to where it's like, you know, it's literally lifting the image off the page. I appreciate that. Yeah. But at the same time, when I watch a Batman and knowing just how tragic that character truly is and what he is actually battling every day, a part of me, even when watching a Tim Burton movie, wants to see a little bit of that brooding, that darkness, right? Yeah. So the movie with George Clooney, I mean, for me, you guys can t say otherwise, obviously, but for me, there was none of that. It, it, it almost felt like, you ever see those... uh commercials with ben stein where he's like yep. clear eyes has the <laughs> yep. power to moisturize and like yep. it's all monotone yep i felt like he played batman yeah <laughs> in that movie completely <laughs> monotone but not just did he but he didn't monotone it does that make sense like he didn't take yeah. his voice and he didn't go from talking up here to hey i'm bruce wayne to i'm batman or like you know christian bale your guy you know, yeah. where he's like, he's like, hey, I'm Bruce Wayne. And he's like, Batman. Yeah. you know, like, like none of that's going on. Yeah. George Clooney was like, I'm George Clooney. And then when he was Batman, he was like, I'm George Clooney. So, <laughs> no, no, I get you. And actually, it's really funny you should say that because that's what pretty much the exact same critique I was going to have is that it just felt like George Clooney was just there to collect a paycheck and he didn't give a rat's ass about actually acting as Batman or Bruce Wayne at all, and thus he was a terrible Batman and terrible Bruce Wayne. And it's ironic because I actually think George Clooney is a great actor. I just think that he was like, this was not the role for him. And I don't know if it was because he didn't care about the character or the story, and maybe that's why he didn't get into it. I don't know. But it just, it, it, it just was, it, it failed on pretty much every front, unfortunately. So it, so yeah, that's pretty much um, all I have to say about that. Um, Sam, I don't know if you would care to give your opinion. I mean, it, it was pretty much covered. Yeah, so you feel pretty much said. the same way about the Clooney and, uh... I feel like, I mean, obviously it was terrible. But yeah, he played more of himself as Bruce, right? Yeah. So I, I felt, because he's, you know, he's George Clooney billionaire, so he's like, okay, I'll just be myself. Yeah, and it doesn't work at no. all. So, um... <clears throat> Alright, so don't get me wrong. Don't yeah. get me wrong here. Yeah. If the DVD was in front of me right now, mm -hmm. I'd watch it. Oh, so you? would I, hands down. I wouldn't. Now, <laughs> that's just the credit that I have to say Batman, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yes, George Clooney, was he a good pick? If he applied himself, maybe. But that's like picking Ben Affleck. He didn't really have the look, though. I have to say, like, I don't think Clooney really had no, the he look did, for a Bruce but what Wayne. They needed eh. to do, no, he did. But know. what they needed to do was they needed to take the grays away, give him a yeah. darker hair, give him a little more of a high top cut. Yeah. Clooney could have pulled off that pretty boy Bruce he could have, Wayne He could have, but he didn't, was the, is my point. Is but they didn't, they, they didn't yeah. even attempt it. It was just no. like, hey, George. You want to be Batman? He's and George like, sure. is like, how much? And <laughs> yeah. then they're like, hey, like $100 million. He's like, sounds good. And shit. Like, I yeah. don't know what Hollywood charges motherfuckers, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I get your point. And I, I do feel the same way about it. But 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty. So that's yeah. why that's why I feel like he's in rank eight. No longer needs to be discussed because that's just time wasted on a not worthy Batman. So I feel like yeah, Bernard I was just gonna say we're ready. We're ready to move to on. Maybe transition. Yes, and we're ready to move on. So there, yeah, there's not really much else to say about the Clooney Batman. That now, obviously, he was only Batman for one movie and for good reason. So, um, but yeah, so moving on, we're gonna come up to number seven on the list, and number seven is going to be the aforementioned. Ben Affleck, who, of course, uh, play, portrayed Batman in three movies so far. So in uh, Batman vs. Superman, uh, The Suicide Squad, and uh, The Justice League. So, um, you know, I have to say, this is this is going to be the part of the list uh, right early where um, I tr- I'm trying to make some differentiation. So only a small part of where these actors rank on this list is going to be how good or bad or how successful or unsuccessful the movies they were in was. Um, That's not going to be a primary deciding factor, I don't think, for any of us. Um, But for me personally, I will tell you, I actually kind of liked the Ben Affleck Batman and thought he should probably be a little bit higher than this. I think he's kind of a victim of circumstance in a few ways. I think that um, he does have the look. Uh, he did pull off Batman and Bruce Wayne pretty well. Um, he is playing, obviously, like a little older version of the character, kind of yeah. like grizzled version of the character a little more. Um, and so I actually did like his portrayal. I think the bat suit was actually good, um, the one he was in. Um, I think that he... Uh, unfortunately, he was... he. I think the biggest problem with the Affleck Batman is that all three movies that he portrayed Batman in were like three of the worst superhero movies of the modern era. Um, and then arguably three of the worst superhero movies ever to be, con- to be honest. And we talked about that when the three of us talked about the uh, DCEU uh, power oh, rankings. Not which... to, not to, j- <laughs> yeah. just to touch on that point you just spoke on. Yeah. That's where the difference between me and you is. Yeah. You're someone who watches the movies. Yeah. I'm someone who knows the comics, the history, and the movies. Right. So when I see the actor on screen, mm-hmm. Affleck kind of played old man Bruce Wayne. Almost old man Bruce Wayne. Not quite, mm-hmm. but almost. But, right. Like, but hear me on this. He, he, he fit the build. He fit the character. Yes. But the part they gave him they literally had, okay, hey, we had this great Nolan series. Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to play Batman kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Let's have people try out. And if you looked at the animated series, Ben Affleck kind of actually even in drawn character would look like Bruce Wayne. Yes. So he did fit in. Oh, what absolutely. What bothered me with Affleck, though, is that like at least the other actors tried to make a different voice when they were Batman. Not Clooney, but go ahead. You know, <laughs> Aside from Clooney, Clooney, who's the only name on this list lower than him. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's underneath. But, uh, but you know, bit, he yeah. was modulated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not only that, don't get me wrong, like... I feel like he tried, as far as the voice goes, I have to say, I feel like, I feel like, like he tried to, tried to use Batman as a filler. He tried to tone moment. down. Like, I feel, no, I agree with you there, but I think as far as the voice goes, I think that he, they just tried to like have him do like a toned down version of like the Christian Bale Batman voice. It's like, hey, do that, but not like nearly as seriously or as, is like, no, but that's, that, that's whatever. where you're wrong because he wasn't even doing that. Dude. A little he, bit. I could hear he it had, a little bit. No, he was modulated. He's he, like, he had it's over in his, shot. In his cowl. I don't he had want to do this in, in his front of your daughter. That when he spoke, <laughs> it like modulated his voice. Well, regardless, I, you know. So, so it changed the vibration. Sure. So when he would talk, it sounded different. That's sure. what I'm saying. Like, it, it, it was. But wasn't they, his voice attempt. was still altered. Maybe it wasn't by him, but it was still altered with, for at Batman, all. Which is, which is fine. But my point is. But not just that, but then they also take it, and and like I said, it's hard. He feels to like an Batman afterthought in those movies rankings because no, but it, it's they're not hard standalone to do Batman, Batman power movies. rankings because you also have to look at 
the roles they're given. You also have to look at the right, the and obviously these are the, all playing. right, and obviously the, these you know, movies that Affleck is Batman in are not standalone Batman movies. So it's almost like he feels like an afterthought in a lot of like not in Dawn of Justice, obviously, even though that movie was god awful. But in, he's like a supporting actor. He's a cameo in Suicide Squad. And then he is obviously he's one of the main cast in the Justice League, but he he like you said, and I kind of agree with you. He doesn't feel like he's being put in center stage, really. He just feels like his his story, like his own personal story doesn't feel like it's being, you know, given the time of day because we've already had God knows how many Batman movies and shows and everything. So then at why this point. would someone like that take that? that role onto themselves. You know what I mean? Like, no, I agree. If they Absolutely. Feel, if they, if they kind of feel like, okay, I'm just a filler. Yeah. They're going to play it to the specs, right? Yeah. Hence voice modulation, standing up to Superman, you know, yada, yada, yada. Not going above but and beyond in the, any the thing capacity. Is, though, if they gave Affleck the same movie series, they gave Nolan, like that Nolan gave Bale. He could have excelled. Affleck could have probably been better than Bit. Like that, that that's where it gets Possibly. so difficult because it's like the time period and 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 the type of Batman they're having you play. Right. And that's the same argument with the Joker because we could always have that podcast. Oh, the same true. argument with the Joker <laughs> is like, okay, what rendition of the Joker are you playing? Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Of so, course. Yeah. Like, it, it's really difficult for me. I feel like Affleck did a good job with what he was given. Right. I feel like he could have done a better job if given something better. Yeah. But I do think that he does deserve a lower rank. Do I think seven? No, but eh, it's hard. It's, I think he's I, a it's victim. not that for me, that's not an arguable point because I would probably only put him at maybe six, potentially, potentially depending on where the other numbers went. Yeah. five but more than likely six i'd probably put him at like six he was pretty in my much opinion. even though you specifically you know? put him at seven on the list you sent me but anyway that's neither here nor there um i feel like so i think to sum up the ben affleck batman i think he's just pretty much like status quo batman basically <laughs> like that's that's how i would define him at the end of the day like he did i agree with you 100 percent. he did good with what they gave him but unfortunately what they gave him well, was not if much. you remember the first list so. you gave me also included two other batmen yes and then i we already explained that so mm-hmm. yeah what, we, that, that our three point. honorable that, mentions. that's why he was seven like yes i just had so. to delete two batman that's why you got that list yeah otherwise I mean, he'd, if we I mean? were fa- like, i was just gonna say if we were factoring in all the other guys who we don't know anything about but i'm saying like qualify, you can't you can't you can't yeah. say oh you had him at seven like like yeah because at that point the yeah. list wasn't eight yes. you know what i mean so no, i understand uh sam would you <laughs> would you care to weigh in on the the affleck batman anything you want to say about him i liked his bruce better than his batman mm, that's a good point he he did do a good job of uh of kind of like bitter old man Bruce, except for like not quite like old man, like Batman Beyond Bruce, but like mm-hmm. not quite there yet. Like maybe 10 ish years away for like younger than like bitter old man, maybe 15 years away from yeah, bitter he was old getting man. Bitter. He had, yeah. you know, the youngins, the youngins grew up and mm-hmm. just, yeah. I liked him better. I didn't, I mean, he wasn't a terrible Batman, but I just like Bruce better. Yeah, I would agree with that. His, uh, at the end of the day, like you I like said, like them better in Argo, right? Yes. Status quo, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> That's at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I don't think I have, we have anything else to say about uh, Affleck. Um, who knows if he's gonna, if we're gonna see more of him? I mean, he had three. Oh, I'm sure we will. He's in the Flash, isn't he? I think so. He's supposed to be in Flashpoint, but yeah. Who knows if they? I I would not be offended. If he wasn't, if they reprised that role to Pattinson, yeah, I mean it's it's tricky, honestly. Like when like, we get to that yeah. Batman, I'm gonna explain why I feel that way, and 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 I feel like other purists that are truly into Batman listen and hear it Indeed. because he plays. Like I said, when we get to that point, yes, yeah, so we'll we're talk not talking about, about him right now, so we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so all right, so we'll move on to uh, number six on the list, and. 
Uh, speaking of good Bruce Waynes coming in at number six, we have Val Kilmer, who, of course, played Batman in uh, one movie only. That was Batman Forever in 1995. Right before Clooney, and That's uh, so long ago. yes, it is, and uh, unfortunately, another uh, wildly unsuccessful movie here. The late '90s were a shitty time to be a Batman fan, I guess. But um, no, <laughs> I, I, I this, love this, this movie. Oh wow, that's that's shocking, actually. Yeah, especially given how awful because... the portrayal of Two Face in this movie is. But that's another story. Um, yes, but you know the actor is legendary. Oh, know, absolutely. Sometimes. So that okay. So just a side note about this movie, I feel like on paper this movie should have been incredible. Like Batman Forever really? should have been an incredible movie on paper. When you see the star power they have on that cast, and you see it, it seems like an interesting story. But just the execution was so bad. The way they did Two Face was like so egregious like i just don't even want to think about it like wonder if and that's that was fine. because tommy lee jones didn't want to be there uh maybe he maybe he, he had clooney he did jim carrey did he oh yeah oh, oh he, you're right he did. Is so awesome yeah, i know but they that... he couldn't stand jim riddle carrey me this time. jim carrey was a great riddler but um but oh, yeah absolutely. in any event so uh as far as but the as far as batman the kilmer goes batman goes kilmer, I will what say, I'm saying is, yeah. listen, I kind of have the opposite of you that Sam had in the last one where she felt like Ben Affleck played Bruce Wayne better than Batman. I right. feel like in this movie, Kilmer played Batman better than Bruce Wayne. I feel Interesting. like... I feel like he was... The movie kind of... It did have the star cast. It did have the storyline. But it also had a much deeper underline. So my point is you had the two face, you had the Riddler, you had their plot, you had what Batman had to undo. Right. But the one thing people didn't truly focus on was Batman the whole time was kind of talking to a psychologist about what's going on in his head. Mm -hmm. And he did get attached to said psychologist, of course. Oh, I'll you got to have your romance theory. Of course. But even in the end, when he had to choose between her or being Batman, of course he's going to Which would be choosing between being Bruce Wayne or being Batman, yeah. and seeing the psychologist and you know the love factor, he put that all together so well. And in the end, obviously, they always choose to continue to be Batman. Right. Because Although, given the fact Batman that he wasn't, is, given but, the fact he wasn't Batman again, he probably should have chose the girl. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, he was ready to shut it all down, be done with it, <clears throat> and then something happened. Yeah. You know, we all saw the movie. Riddler yeah. went nuts. Two Face went nuts. Things went crazy. They found out who he was. They kidnapped Robin. They kidnapped the psychiatrist. He had to go do his shit. He put we on know, a new yeah. suit. Yeah, you know, so the whole shebang of bang. Yeah, so Bane was a factor, like 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 all this stuff, right? So, so yeah, so I will st- so, I will tell you that I thought so. so I, no, no, but let yeah. me finish my point. My point right. is that Val Kilmer played a better Batman because Bruce Wayne was also the support character. Like the movie was about Batman, but they had that underlying story of like Bruce losing his parents and his nightmares and the other psyche so which Batman has to where he feels like he feels like he is Batman his name is Batman yeah but he has to wear the mask he has to wear the suit of Bruce Wayne in yeah. this movie and that's it that that was different than what we got in certain other movies because we'll get to movies further up where that's also a thing but yeah. this is where that was kind of with Kilmer first really introduced in my mind. An actor can do that, you know? Yeah. And, and I, pre- and I appreciated that. Yeah. So I, I will agree with you on a lot of, th- of those points. So I agree that uh, Kilmer really did a great job. 
I disagree that he was a better Batman than Bruce Wayne. I think he actually played a better Bruce Wayne and quite possibly one of the best Bruce Waynes that we've seen in live action. And here's why. Because he has the swagger. He has the look. He has the playboy factor. He he 100% looks the part of what I would want to see from Bruce Wayne. And to his Batman side, like, yes, he, he perhaps he did do a good job of portraying the psychology of Batman, but the one issue I took with the with his Batman rendition was that he just didn't seem like enough of a tough guy for Batman. Because we all know how tough Batman is, obviously. Uh, you know, being a martial artist and, and skilled combatant and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So to me, he didn't really do a good enough job coming off as a badass, which is why I think his his Bruce Wayne was actually better than his Batman. And I think his Bruce Wayne, again, like I said, was one of the best Bruce Waynes we've got in live action. Um, the bat suit was meh. Um, I could take it or leave it. Um, but I I think that also uh, Val Kilmer would probably be maybe could be higher. Um, but I feel like this he him like the like the middle of the bottom rankings in this list I think were a little tricky because like you're like there's a lot of ifs ands or buts that could potentially shift the rankings, but you can't go off of that. You have to go off what we got. And unfortunately we only got one movie out of Val Kilmer. I would have actually liked to see him come back for at least another one. Um, unfortunately that didn't happen obviously. Um, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's limited at to just that one movie and that one portrayal. Although I think he did do a very good job of portraying the psychology of Batman and, and Bruce, uh, I just, you know, uh, my issue with his Batman is that he just doesn't seem like enough of like a tough guy or a badass to be as good of a Batman as as he should be. Um, but but yeah, Sam, uh, would you care to uh, give your thoughts on the Val Kilmer Batman then? I mean, honestly, I don't remember him as much <laughs> as everybody else does. So that mm. that just say something. I mean, I don't think he was terrible, obviously, because you know. Because he's not last, loves. obviously. No, <laughs> so. yeah, he's not last on my list. Of course. But I don't, I don't know. I just he was unmemorable, is what him. you're trying to tell us. I think. Yeah. See? I see. I think, and I think part of that is just the fact that he he was only Batman in one movie. Kind of the same thing as Clooney, although. But it, I remember Clooney more. Well, you. I think the thing is, you remember Clooney more because he was so bad at it. That's the thing. <laughs> is like you, and and so you probably don't remember. Like Val Kilmer wasn't bad enough for you to really remember a lot about him. So that kind of led him into like the unmemorable category. Yeah, which sometimes like sometimes I'll be thinking about the Batman movies mm-hmm. and I forget that he's been Batman. <laughs> well I then I put Keaton in mm-hmm. his movie. That's so funny. Well Keaton was supposed to be in that movie, I believe. And right? that's probably why I always think of Keaton in that movie because yeah, Kilmer was kind of the Batman that never was supposed to be. Nothing but, against Val Kilmer. Yeah. I think no, he's a he great was, actor. It's just... He was, no, and I think he did a fine job in that, like, I mean, I told you how I felt about it. Obviously, yeah. he's not last on the list for a reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's just kind of where it lies with him, I think. Um, again, if he would have, like... He's kind of, like, you could almost say the same thing in a sense for him as you could about Affleck in the sense of, like if he would have had more time, he could have been better, but it's like, he only had, he only had one movie. Aflac, as we talked about, had three technically, even though one of them. He would have had more time to flesh him out a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. And he could have had more time. Like if they would have brought Kilmer back for another movie, then he could have like grown into more of like a badass Batman, you know, it's, but he never got a chance to get that far, I think. So that's just kind of where he I think why he his falls. villains weren't very, you know. Well, his I mean, well, the Riddler. Batman either. Well, I was gonna say the problem is like the two. I think Two Face was supposed to be more of the primary villain than the Riddler was Probably, yeah. um, in that movie, but the Two Face in that movie was just so fucking bad. Like that was like oh my god, like that was just the biggest travesty of. And I've always thought Two Face has always been one of the most m- intriguing Batman villains to me, aside from the obvious answers like the Joker. Um, but yeah, like it just that that you know, and I and that could be a part of the reason too is just the the fact that the movie ended up being so bad. I think that it just um, it falls where it does, and it is what it is. But yep. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's time to move on from, from that as well. So we're going to move up the list to number five. And coming in at number five on the list, we have Robert Pattinson, who, of course, uh, is the newest addition to the Batman family, uh, playing uh, Batman only one time in, of course, the movie that just released about a month ago, The Batman, um, end of 2021, um, and for anyone who finds this years later. Uh, um, and so, um, yeah, I think... Um, so how do I, how will I put this? So this is, this is an interesting entry for me. Cause I think Robert Pattinson, like what I'm going to say about Pattinson, as far as where he lies on the list, um, we could, I think we're probably, we might say the same thing as both about him as we did about Affleck and Kilmer in the sense of it's he, they're, they're is more to be done with him. And the only advantage he has is that there's most certainly going to be more done with him at this point, you know? Um, but yeah, so that movie, uh, was actually the inspiration for this list, um, was the, you know, the Robert Pattinson, the Batman movie that just came out a few weeks ago, about a month ago. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So I'll give you my thoughts on, on Pattinson. So I have to say, yeah. You there, buddy? Emotional damage. I don't get it. Sorry. I'm having technical difficulties here. Can you hear me? You? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. What I want to say is that Pattinson, um, I also is feels ranked too low. All right. So oh, yeah, he needs to be higher on the list for me. So and the reason. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the reason I say that and. I'm sure maybe Sam agrees is that the reason I say that is because he played the true form of what a young raw yep. true Batman would be. Unhinged Batman. How he you know, he, he, yeah. he wasn't the perfect form of Batman just yet. Mm -hmm. He was still learning. And that's why the end of the movie emphasized you know, I need to be something more. I need to be something greater. Throughout the movie, they kept calling him strictly vengeance. He's vengeance. He's vengeance. Like, at the end of the movie, he's reaching out for someone to come grab him. Spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. Reaching out for someone to come grab him for moving some fucking scaffolding rubble shit. Mm -hmm. And the mayor, the new mayor, isn't even reaching for him. And they're all scared of him. some, some, they're all scared of him. Mm -hmm. And there's little kid, kids who can see true, true good in people. This little kid, and I'm, and I feel like it was the kid he saw in the beginning, that was at the funeral, Probably. when he was Bruce Wayne. Spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that was the kid that reached out and grabbed him, and he pulled him out, and then he put his hand back in, and then other people followed. Yeah. So. As he's narrating this, he said, I realize I can't, uh, you know, I, I, it's not that I haven't had an effect on these people or this or this city or this town. Uh, I need to be greater. I need to be something more. Right. And that's where I feel like they're, they can develop him into the Batman he's supposed to be. Right. Not the one that they currently portrayed because that was the young, raw Batman. And I appreciate the fact that in this movie, how many times have we seen Martha and Thomas Wayne get shot so and many. pearls <laughs> fall on the ground? Many, many and times. Whatever, and Batman sitting there sad with roses on the floor. How many times have we seen this? Goodbye. This movie didn't even have an ounce of that. It, it mentioned it here and there. It brought it up to where it was important when it was important. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciated that because it was like the movie was long as it was. I feel like there were some other things that could be cut out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there was some filler in there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I have to just as a side note, the villains, um, the ones we witnessed, mm -hmm. I will say the Riddler iffy about that guy but penguin 
the way that Colin Farrell played the penguin was fucking beautiful. I loved oh, it. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to say about that. But as far as how Robert Pattinson played Batman, I feel like that was very true to that age of the Batman. That that was the Batman that just got out of the League of Shadows. That was the Batman that... Because you have to understand, Batman, prior to him becoming Batman, there was a buildup. And there was a series about it. It's a show called Gotham. So there's a series about it. And this is this plays into what Pattinson does. So there's a series about it where Batman, you know, as a kid, his parents, you know, he, he's young when they die, but he doesn't leave home until he's 18. Now, the reason why he leaves home is because he himself decides to get a gun. And he knows that the Falcone family is responsible for killing his parents. So he finds out where uh, Don Falcone is eating. He gets a revolver from a street dealer. He goes into the restaurant. He goes to pull the gun and shoot Don Falcone. Has the gun pointed at him. No one's moving. Don Falcone has his hand up like because he'll just pull the trigger. But the thing was, he couldn't do it. Bruce Wayne, Batman, that 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 morality that it would make me just like you. You're just you're another human being like me. You're just sick. Like he had these realizations because in a way he was also a prodigy. You know, he, he, he grew up in a rich family, schooling. He, he was a genius. That's why Batman is the world's greatest detective. Yes. So he had all of these realizations and couldn't pull the trigger. To then which Falcone's men beat the shit out of him, threw him in a dumpster, and then he ended up in a fucking junk heap somewhere and left. No one knew where he went. No one knew he attacked Falcone. Nothing. And then, by the time he was 26 years old, shows back up into Gotham, back to his home, back to Alfred Pennyworth, and that's where he's like, we're building this fucking cave. And Alfred's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But the whole point of all this story is, and the origin is, that's where the Pattinson, Pattinson kind of picks Batman, up. the Pattinson Batman mm -hmm. is that Batman. Right it that way yeah that makes a lot of sense no that's a good way to look you know? at it and uh, and i i do agree with i do agree with that mostly um so yeah and the, and that's you know it because it notice how in the, the movie like, like, listen sure. think about this alfred raised bruce right mm -hmm. but in the movie that pattinson did how disrespectful was he to alfred incredibly <laughs> So Alfred was like Bruce's father. Yep. And and he was a shit to him. Yep. He was too focused on everything. So yeah. Exactly. Alfred and Alfred's purpose is to pull him back from that. That was what Thomas wanted. That's what he wrote to Alfred in the letter when he knew he was going to die. Like, you know, my yeah. son is a good person. Just try to keep him humble kind of thing. Sure. So Alfred tries to keep him in. But Bruce just goes to into the abyss. Yeah. And, you know, they yeah. show this confliction. That That's Batman's weakness. Yeah, so... They uh, say in any superhero movie ever, mm -hmm. anywhere, animated, live action, you want to distract Batman? Do something with his parents' grave or do something about his parents. Mm-hmm. You'll fully, you'll have his full attention. Yeah, yeah. So that's his weakness, right? So I have to say, um, so as far as the patents of Batman goes, that that does make a lot of sense, and I do agree with with the with that that the tie-in. Um, I will say, but I really that's why he treated Alfred that. Sure, way. and and I get that. I really do. That's my point. And Alfred's like his father, and so right, and so I do like the way. I will tell you, and I was skeptical at first, but I do will tell you that I do did really enjoy the way that Pattinson played Batman. I thought that he did a 
very good job of playing Batman. Um, I think there's a couple reasons why he falls um, where he falls on this list, and Dude, I think there's going to up, be... Um, when he looked up and all I heard was, who are you, man? And he looks up and he goes, I'm Vengeance. Uh, I was like, what? Yeah, I, I, that didn't have the same effect on me, I, I will tell you. but It had a um, huge effect on me because that almost... Well, it makes one a, of us a Conroy vibe. Like I was like, "What?" Yeah, I didn't get that. Um, I kind of so that's good. So that's good stuff right there. Yeah, it was good, but I, I, it, yeah, it didn't give me chills or anything. But I will tell you. Um, so I, I did like the way he played Batman. Um, I did like the Penguin. Um, the Riddler. I thought they took him in a weird direction that I, I wasn't. The I wasn't fully on board with the way that you they, especially the, the costume. Yeah. The costume was was so killing what it. What was me. it about the Riddler that you liked? I love the direction they went in, went in with him. I know he's, you know, he's a smart maniac, mm-hmm. but I, I, just, I don't know. I love the new way they played him. And yes, his outfit was different. He was just getting started. Yep. He went to a store and bought whatever he could find. A leather jacket and a fucking gas mask. You give me a fucking It doesn't break. bother me. It bothers me a lot, but I that's not the fine. point. It, he was I can getting, honestly like, say, <laughs> too, as a fan, it doesn't bother me either. Well, then I guess you Thank don't you. care about comic because, accuracy because, as no, much no, as you no, say because, you do, sir. No, Every no. villain and <laughs> character... They don't have their outfit. Yes, I know. They don't have They're the going vintage. To start with something. I understand that. I get that. At least it's green. What I, well, I will say oh, this. Well, there you I go. I didn't <laughs> like about the Riddler character mm-hmm. or his outfit. What? Well, listen, his outfit didn't bother me. Uh-huh. What I didn't like about the Riddler characters, I felt like they made him a little too loose cannonish kind of crazy because the Riddler is a very calculative person. Mm-hmm. That is true. So I feel like in this movie, when he was all like, <laughs> and he was like freaking out and stuff, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's weird. So my thing, I agree with that, but I also would say but, that, but he did that with the mask on, but that's where it plays to what Sam's point is, is where in the beginning you don't start off with what you end up with, and that's you know fine. I, mean? I get that. I was, so I was not listen, listen. I was not expecting him to come out in the Arkham, fucking green question maybe mark some suit. Treatment, I was maybe not comes expecting. Out. Next thing you know, I wasn't expecting. You got that. the fucking Riddler. Sure, you know and I wasn't I mean? expecting. But what I'm saying that. is, I didn't think he did a terrible thing. I just think. The crazy parts for me were a little much too. I think I'm he was a little disagree. too. My my bigger point with him, and then I don't really want to talk about him too much, but because this isn't about him. But I will say my bigger point with him is he also seemed a little too bloodthirsty for me. Like I never, I never really picture the Riddler as like as as sadistic. I guess I would you would say as like a Joker per se. Um, so I thought that they took the Riddler, the Riddler, just to notate and close up on that point, as far as the Riddler goes, just to clarify for, mm-hmm. for fans out there, mm-hmm. the Riddler is a sadistic character. The Riddler is a psychopath. Sure. But that's true. But, 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 but yeah. he's, he's calculated. So therefore he falls into the characterization of a sociopath. Mm-hmm. So the Riddler can be right in front of you and you have no idea. Yes. Okay, so that's what makes him so dangerous. He, the Joker is dangerous in his own way because he does just doesn't give a fuck. But mm-hmm. the Riddler is calculative. That's why he's able to be caught. And that's why Batman catches him because Batman is the world's greatest detective. So that's how that kind of works with like arch nemeses. Sure. Now, Batman has multiple, the Joker being primary... But the Riddler, like I said, I feel like it was important to bring him into this conversation because it helped because that was the primary antagonist to Pattinson, which was what Pattinson was fighting against through the movie. Mm -hmm. And he was getting like his parents shit thrown at him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, so so I think that was actually, a, as far as the movie itself goes, it was a good idea to make the Riddler the main villain for the Pattinson Batman movie, just simply based on the fact of what direction they were taking this version of Batman in. Because um, the they only, do, that was the one... only the, 
the only difference, I, I, the last thing I wanted to say about him, mm-hmm. and you can continue on your point, and then we can continue to the next one, but mm-hmm. the only point I was making was that the main difference they made with the Riddler mm-hmm. to the Batman was that the Riddler actually like knew Bruce Wayne and actually worked for Wayne Enterprise. Mm-hmm. He wasn't in direct contact ever with Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. but he worked for the company. Right. And then he had, uh, I wouldn't say like a, proposal but he had a prototype for something and and yeah. they kind of alluded to this in the batman forever with jim carrey where he had the mind control thing yeah but it wasn't a mind control thing he had something different it was something like a it was like a if you put it on someone you can you, you could control them kind of device yeah yeah that's, and, I get it. so <clears throat> that that yeah that was what was in the comics but like all right, yeah, so, I okay, we're, we're a little off topic here, so I get all that. The, but that was my problem with the movie, is that, like, it wasn't like Bruce Wayne, Atway and Enterprise, meeting the Riddler. Yeah, no, they didn't really Riddler, play it, as, you know, at the, yeah. it didn't really go down like the way that it probably should have. If they took a little bit of have. Batman Forever and mixed a little bit of the Pattinson, like, that would have been a good... A yeah, good spin, but this you know? movie, I do say, I do agree that this movie was long enough as is. Um, I, but my point with the Riddler as the villain was it's good because we did get to see the detective side of Batman, which is something that they don't. Oh, I was so put... happy with that. There you go. Yeah, so that's something that I appreciated too because they don't really give that the time of day very much. Um, so I appreciated the fact that they did that in this movie. Now, um. I think there's three reasons why Pattinson falls on this at this spot on the list, and I think despite you guys thinking he might want should he should be a little bit higher, I actually think he should be a little bit lower right now, believe it or not, um, or about right where he should be. Um, but there's three main reasons for that. So reason number one, um, and I think this is um, probably the biggest reason for me is that I think that he played an absolutely god awful Bruce Wayne. I thought he was one of the worst Bruce Waynes that I've seen in any live action Batman. Now I understand he's supposed to be playing a different version of the character. I understand he's supposed to be, you know, young raw Batman as you put it, and I that's fine. I get that. But I don't think I I didn't appreciate seeing what I perceived as like 16 year old pouty emo Bruce Wayne like that's what I got when I was that's what I got yeah well because I've said it how many times before um like like uh, another thing is Robert Pattinson to me I gotta be honest with you and I'm not trying to be mean about this but he's an ugly boy he really is like he ain't no fucking playboy like he's not he does not have the swagger he does not have the charisma he does not have the anything of that so um I, for those reasons, I believe, in my mind, he is... That's every girl that has his post. Well, whatever, there's a lot of weirdos out there, but my point wall. is, whatever, I hate Twilight 2. I don't want to hear Robert Pattinson ain't a sex symbol. He's yes, he not, is. Not in my mind, he ain't, I can tell you that, but listen, my point is, listen, no, you listen. No, guy. you listen. I'm, I'm not I, I am prepared. Guy, but I bet you, listen... I'm yeah, sure. He, has he had more guy, women than me? Sure, of but that's women fine. Kick him out of bed. <laughs> Whatever, but I'm not a woman. But that's the, that's neither here nor there. And sure, has he had more girlfriends than me? Sure, but he's also rich and famous. But that's neither here nor there. My point is that, that kind of sounds like a Playboy, bro. Whatever. He's yeah, in real life maybe, but in in movies he doesn't come across that way. In this movie, he's a shitty Bruce Wayne. He does not come across that way. And <laughs> no, and especially he did to me, and I've never found him very attractive. Uh, whatever. The the scene where he see, the scene where see, he's look. with whatever the scene where that. he's with the scene where he's with Alfred and he's like you have to meet with the board sir and he's like oh, I don't care I'm not gonna talk to them who cares if the company goes under me 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 like get the fuck out of here with that shit like you mean to tell me that he wouldn't that in no in any circumstance that he wouldn't give a fuck about his father's company going under but like that's fuck what Bruce him, Wayne was dude. like in the like, beginning like that's bullshit like that's just bullshit, are you kidding dude. me are I'm you not kidding, kidding me? you it's so that, he's that's a shit so Lee... all right let me finish here because we've already spent way too much time talking about this so number one shitty bruce wayne one of the shittiest bruce Hold Waynes on. we've when had in said live his action. father's company though i need to allude something to you what's that 
his father's company. The whole reason Batman became Batman yeah. was because Thomas Wayne was a good man, uh-huh. but had to make bad moves and bad decisions. That's fine. And made compromises and worked with the mafia yes. and worked with this and worked with that. So Batman, his son, there was no need for that in his mind. Sure. So and, be that and, as it and may. in order to fix that became Batman. So part of the reason he became Batman, a part of the reason him and Martha were killed was because of Thomas Wayne. So if anything, yes. Thomas Wayne is the catalyst. Yes. That's why in Flashpoint, it's Bruce who gets killed. Uh-huh. Thomas and Martha who lives. Martha becomes the Joker. Yeah. Bruce is dead. Yes. Thomas Wayne becomes Batman and uses guns. Yes, that's all like, very interesting and well and good, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. So my point is, again, shit, one of the shittiest Bruce Waynes we've had in live action. It has everything number to two, do. I was saying number he, two. I was saying, number you said, two. You said his company. Number two. Number two. Yes, his father's company. Number two. But that that is ancillary. Number two. He ha- and this this point you may even agree with is the that he hasn't had is he has a not part of what makes him who he is. Sure, yes, that's fine. So that's why it doesn't make any sense that he wouldn't care about it going under like he didn't in this movie. That's why so, he wouldn't care oh because it was crooked. Whatever. My point anyway, is, it continue. doesn't make sense. But my point continue. is, number two continue. is that number two is that he and I, you would probably agree with this is that he hasn't had enough time in the role and like i was saying similarly to as you could say with kilmer because he only had one movie similarly as you could say with affleck because even though technically he had three movies none of them were standalone movies they didn't they were they have not been given enough time to really flesh the character out and develop the character and go as far and go as far with the character as they could go with the character now for pattinson that could change in the future but as it stands right now, that's where it is. So, and the third and let, final let thing. Let me help you out with your train of thought here, though. The because third and final thing understand. is that it's, he, no, it's no, no, victim no, of because every Batman, <laughs> every Batman character, uh-huh. okay, the origin is what, what what's important. Yes. But what most people don't realize is that Batman's true origin isn't just the fact that his parents were killed in front of him. Yes. Okay. It's the fact that after that happened. Batman being the prodigy son that he was, the last son of Gotham, mm. in a similar way that Superman is the last son of Krypton. Uh-huh. Okay? Batman is the last son of Gotham. All right? So what I'm saying is Thomas Wayne was trying to fix things within his company that he realized got beyond his reach. It costed him and his wife his life. Mm -hmm. The point is, Batman didn't become Batman because of that. Batman researched what they were into, saw it, went to act vengeance, tried to kill the person that he found out because he found out who killed his parents. Yes, we you just just talked about this. We yes, we know. I understand, but the part that I left out was that at that point he left. He, when he came back, when he was 26, the company was still running. It still had CEOs, yes. so he was still rich. It was still coming into his account, whatever. Yes, yes, I know. Point being, when he came back at that point is when he eradicated and made Bruce. He made Wayne Enterprises fully legitimate and just cleared all that bullshit out. He yes. came back. He was the perfect Batman. Pattinson is the 18-year-old Batman. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, like, what I'm saying yes. is you have met the point I understand all that. I do. I get it. I understand. And it just bothers me. It bothers the fuck out of me. Which part? <laughs> he, he did a really good job. As Batman, yes, uh, and, I agree with you. As Batman, he and did a very good job. I had a, a lot of job. doubts about him. And so I feel did like I. he did a good job as so, Bruce Wayne too, because you know I what? Strongly the reality with that, is that fine. Batman. The, okay, but the and reality that's... is that Batman doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. Yes. The reality is that Batman wears 
the 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 batman suit but that's when he feels like who he really is yes so batman when he is bruce wayne that's when he feels like he's in costume that's what you're not understanding that's he doesn't want to be bruce wayne okay that's fine none of that changes what i said that's that's completely fine but none of that changes what i said but that's the batman that pattinson gave us and no one else has ever given us that that's why there's a good reason why nobody else has given us that before uh, because it fucking sucked but anyway and the last and the last thing that i will say and the last thing that i will say obviously the time thing i think if he 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 is going to have more time to have more screen time and more movies and everything so he may very well become better and i think the final point is that um these he he was kind of the part of the pack of batman where like everyone everyone who's above him on this list i can't justify putting below him which is why he is where he is like if if some of these other guys were not batman then i would say he could deserve to be higher but nobody who's above him everybody above him has had more longevity and more tenure and more time with the character to develop to the point where they think they all deserve to be above him now again that said in time that could change but as it stands right now that's what it is um but yeah, so uh, I know you chimed in a little bit here or there, Sam. But do you have anything else you want to add on the the Robert Pattinson Batman? I said what I said. I I, I loved him. Have my back, Sam. Have my back. I'm with you. I Pattinson. I thought was great. There you go. Both as Bruce and as Batman. <clears throat> well, I, I agree brilliant. with you fifty percent. <laughs> so. Um, Bernard says he strongly disagree with you. 50%. I strongly, yeah, disag- I strongly disagree with your Bruce Wayne assessment, both of you. But but it is what it is. So, um, but you're outnumbered. So guess what? You're wrong. Well, that's where he is on the list because you guys you guys thought that uh, the people who were above him probably deserve to be too. So um, that's that's <laughs> why what tied into my third point was victim of circumstance, kind of. So and again, I have to put tenure. Or we have to put tenure. I think over if you're good at something for a short period of time you have to put someone who's good at that same thing over a longer period of time over them so um with that in mind we are going to move on to number four on the list and coming in at number four we have um the probably i would say most controversial name on this list which uh we are going to uh explain why obviously um but coming in at number four we have kevin conroy who um obviously uh has been a voice actor for batman for a very very long time and so uh i you might be asking yourself at this point uh this wait a second this was a live action list this was not a list of voice actors but uh, Kevin you Conroy might not be asking into yourself this. that, and you might not be asking yourself, why are we not talking about him in the first place? Well, well let me you finish. Well, if you let me finish, maybe question. if you let me finish, maybe you'd get the answer to that question. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. So, for those of you who may or may not know, um, Kevin Conroy essentially sneaks onto this list uh, through a technicality of the fact that he did make some cameos in live action as Batman in the Arrowverse and uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths and whatnot. So, um, yes, so he comes in at number four. And with that, we also have to um, we have to obviously talk about his uh, long tenure, uh, tenured resume as Batman as a voice actor in the animated series and animated movies and video games and the whole nine yards. So. Um, oh, thank you I'll be so the first much. person. I'm I'm calm now. Thank you. I'm yes. calm now. So I'll be the first person to tell you that I greatly appreciate Kevin Conroy's body of work. I think that his voice is pretty much a perfect Batman voice. Don't get me wrong; it 100 percent is. That's a good host. So I know. So I try. So. Um, but having said that, I think, um, if we're going to talk about like why he falls where he does on the list, I think tenure puts him above Pattinson. However, his tenure is specifically in voice acting, not in live action. So I, I have to kind of the, everyone above him has more of a tenure as far as live action goes. Cause yes, Kevin Conroy has made a couple of cameos in live action as Batman, but this list is primarily live action based almost exclusively live action based so so he makes it on due to the fact that he did appear in live action and yes i will say i think the reason that he appeared as batman as cameos in live action is 
a hat tip to the fact that he did such a great job in his body of work as a voice actor, which again, I give him all the credit in the world for, but this was, but this was kind of a little bit of a tricky one. I feel like, I feel like it's a real talent though. Just, just on that note of like a voice actor. Uh I feel like it's a real talent to be able to take that voice. Right. Right. And you know, you're like you said, most of his career is in the animated series. Yes. Movies, video games yes what i'm saying is all that aside he's always been behind the screen he's always been reading off a script but he still had to make it his own right so what i'm saying is when he got a chance to put that actually on screen when i watched it i feel like i feel like he 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 just he needed to get an award for what he did. Like the way they asked him to play. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Batman go that, that far. Like tested a... Robin and the way that like, yeah. like did just how all that broke down. Well, but I will say uh, he aside, did play, he did play in live action since we're trying to focus on that. I will say he did play a very good, uh, bitter old man, Bruce Wayne in in live action. So this is, this would probably be like, and you saw him just kill all Batman those people. Young. Did yeah. you watch the one? Yeah, no, I watched his stuff. I watched. Uh, I and did you saw my homework. Him kill all those people. I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a good host. I did my homework. Yeah. But yeah. I'm saying you saw him kill yes. all those people. Yes. And talk about and it. And then too. turn around and look at Robin, like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like. Kevin Conroy is just. I don't know. I, I just feel like he should be in the Hall of Fames of Batman. You know. I Does mean, that make sense? I would put him. I would. I would put him if there if there was a Hall of Fame of voice acting. I would definitely put him in there for sure. So, um, voice acting aside, that's the point. That's what I'm saying. Well, there can't be a Hall you of Fame of these, Batman because there's have been like a dozen actors. of them. So you have all these actors with all these tools, yeah. these green screens, harnesses, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. right? You have all these actors and all these actresses mm-hmm. doing all these things, mm-hmm. but when you have someone like Kevin Conroy who only has a script and uh, an image and something you're playing in front of him that he has to add emotion to, mm-hmm. and he makes that better than any movie you've actually really seen because there are animated movies that are like, I've seen every Batman movie there is, and I'm going to tell you, you know my favorite Batman, and he's coming up later. But what I'm saying is, uh, Kevin Conroy, hands down. If you ever ask me, like who's the best, that's him because the animated shit overrides what other actors have tried to. They haven't tried to act off Batman off the comics. They've tried to act off Batman off of Kevin Conroy. You know what I'm saying? Like he's mm. he's the original article, and that's why I feel like Almost. he's too far down the list because he's the original article. Yeah. You know so my mean? right now I know what you mean. Almost he's almost the original article, as we'll get to in just a second. But um, but yeah. So I will say that I think once again with with Conroy. So as far as tenure goes, I think the reason why he is right where he should be at this point is because. It's again. This is a primarily live action. I disagree. List. Just um, saying. Yes, I know you do, but I, but, but I. It's my podcast, and it is a primarily live action list, so you can't disagree with that. Okay. But, okay. Um, okay. Okay. But, but having Power said struggle. that, but having said that, uh, his tenure as a voice actor, Batman, cannot be denied. Obviously, and and but I but I feel like I can't put. The tenure, because his tenure again, ninety nine percent of his career is in animation, is in voice acting, which is great in its own right. And if this were a list of of talking about everything, which the main reason that I didn't want to do a Batman list about everything is because I personally know that I don't have enough information that I can I do. consider everyone. Yeah, but that's just you. That's not. I me. could be a guest so, host. Yeah, so one but, episode. What's up? I mean, Why I guess not? I, I guess I could just let you ramble for like six hours and then put that on YouTube. Oh but I don't my know if God, anybody would watch that. All, but listen, but that's is not none the of point. It not interesting. A lot of it is. Most of it is. But but that's not the point. So the point is, I can't put. Uh, I think the reason why he is where he should be on this list is because 
considering primarily live action, um, that is what it is. But I will tell you that if I, if, you know, if I had the knowledge of all the other Batman who did animation and voice acting and all that stuff for a lot of projects, I think if we, if there were ever a list that I made about that, I think that he would be just at the top, if not at the very top on that for sure. But given that this is again, primarily live action consideration, I think he's kind of right where he needs to go. But, um, but Sam, I know um, you're a big fan of uh, Kevin Conroy as well. So would you care to yeah. weigh in? I'm very biased, of course, on Kevin. Well, Conroy, about everything, yes. but this too. So go ahead. <laughs> I do believe he is the best Batman, uh, but because it is live action and we only got him for a very, very small, unfortunately small part. Yes. I think he's, I don't want to say it, but I think he's where he needs to be. Thank you, thank you. It's it's okay to agree with me occasionally, Sam. I know you don't do it. No, very Sam, did, but, but do you not think that <laughs> it hurts your question. soul to agree with me? That's I gotta remember that one. That's a good one. But let me ask let me ask one question. Hmm. Do you think that just because an actor hasn't had an opportunity to put it live action, right? Don't you think it's a little harder for somebody to just put a voice to emotion? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm right? not disagreeing with that at all. Right, right. So what I'm saying is live action is how he made it in the list. But overall, I mean, you you can't – we can't deny he's played Batman better than anybody. See, it's – I'm agreeing with you. This like, is I, where he's it's – my favorite Batman. This is where it's hard is because but that's it's why really, I don't know why he has to be where he's at. It's really hard. This mind, is why is because it's really hard to compare live action and animation because they're two entirely different animals. Voice acting and in person acting are two completely different animals. And so that's why you really have to talk about them separately. And that's why and this is like I said, this is really more of a live action discussion. If um, it was just hands down Batman. If it was all things considered, you would put and... him at the top, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. My no understanding was it was one. Batman, but you know, and you know. Yeah. So, but I think that's that's I think we we've said all we need to say about about that. So, um, but moving on, we are going to come to number three on the list, and coming in at number three. We have Adam West, who, of course, mm. uh, played Batman in the, uh, speaking of the OG, even though not technically still the, the, the OG. 1960s, Yeah, but baby. the 1960s television show that ran from, I believe, 1966 to 1968. Yes, sir. Um, and so, yeah, this is, uh, it, now we're getting to the cream of the crop here. There's a here. movie. We played in a movie and shit. Yeah, so... Uh, the Adam West, so I I don't have a ton to say about the Adam West Batman because we all know the Adam West Batman, obviously. Now, I think at, the Adam West Batman is the absolute pinnacle of campy, corny, cheesy, hokey, like, it's it's vintage Batman. This is, like, the most vintage of vintage that you can get when it comes to this sort of thing, and... I'm I'll admittedly I'm not the biggest fan of campy things but having said that I am a big fan of the Adam West Batman. So you want to talk about the exact polar opposite of George Clooney for example. Like Adam West was so dedicated, so committed, so into that role even a half a century later if you were to watch some of that old shit you would be like damn, like that guy was in the zone and that guy was into that fucking character. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was not there for the paycheck like a Clooney was. He was there to be Batman. And that is an incredible level of uh, admiration and appreciation for that level of commitment to that character. Um, so that is why I think uh, he he is Adam West is pretty much the grandfather of Batman. I would say, even though he is um, 
not technically the first Batman. I think he is like the first Batman in a lot of people's hearts because, like, obviously the 1940s yeah. were a long time ago, um, and you can't really even find that stuff pretty much anywhere anymore. But you can find the Adam West Batman. So, um, you know, and then obviously he went on and uh, voice acted in in things after that. The fact, um, so yeah, um, he was. <clears throat> this is like. Um, <laughs> You know, it's like the like pow, like thud, what thwack, you know, like the like you you can if you if you ever watch like some of this old stuff, like you can practically like see it on the screen. You know what I mean? Like it's just you know, it's it's really and again, like I'm not a sucker for that kind of stuff. I'm really not. But like and even like the costume, like it's just it's so like you know, like like it's pretty much ripped right out of a page of like like a Batman number one comic issue, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so, so just in sync and so there and so with it, with the, with all the source material, it's just, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's, you know, the, the gist of it, I think so, or the, the whole of it. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know if Mitch is having technical difficulties again, cause I don't hear him trying to, talk no, no, me. listen, I was just <laughs> trying to know what you guys are saying. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Much credit to Adam West. He like, the other characters, <laughs> you know, he, um, he got to play a Batman at a time where, you know, it, it would be hard to play someone without powers and just is wearing a bat suit, you know? Yeah. Nowadays, and no padding. We live in a and according time to where you self have, admittedly you know, CGI and SFX and all the shit. And he didn't all that even stuff. he didn't like, even have padding in his suit according to him. So, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Regardless. But my point is Yes. You know, that that's rough. Absolutely, dude. And all he the more did reason it. to give him all the more credit. And he, did, and he did it for a long time, but my point is I still think I love you, Adam West, but at the same time, it's a different Batman than what I prefer. It's it's Fair. it's a comic, it's a comic character. Yes. He kind of played the less vengeful, in your face. He worked more with like the police. He like, I don't know. This is it vintage wasn't Batman. My favorite. This is this yeah, is vintage, vintage Batman, Batman is not the Batman I prefer. Oh no, I agree so, with you there too. So so for me. Adam West, I don't think he played a very good. Uh, he didn't play the Batman version of the Batman. Of, like, yeah, that like you I, don't, I don't know. I, I, and I, I get just, that. I do. And I I me. do agree with you. I I do agree with you to a point, and that. It, that the obviously the Adam West bat ver, that rendition of Batman is not my favorite rendition of Batman, but I just can't help but you know I just can't help but give him all the love and all the respect in the world for for the work that he put in with that character. Like I said, the, I think the best way you can describe it is just it's vintage Batman. Like it just it doesn't get much more vintage than that. Um, but uh, but Sam, do you, would you care to weigh? And I know you probably don't have much of a uh, much of a history of the Adam West Batman, but uh. Would you care to weigh in as well? You'd think. All right, well, go my ahead. my family, like I said, is uh, Batman. Like, I grew up on Batman, and I would be at my grandmother's, and Adam West Batman would be on all the time. So. All right, all right, there you go. Respect. Do I your, think your grandma West probably grew up with that no. shit. <laughs> well, not grew up with it, but you know. Well, my my mom did, and her brothers did. There you go. Like, she was born in 1960, so. Yeah, so there you go. They they probably think Adam West is like the best Batman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there, so there you go. Well, my so, uncle sure does. So but... it's all a matter of perspective, but um... yeah, he's not the Batman everybody knows and loves now. He's yes. in his own little league. Vintage. He was, good. he was he was a good Batman for the time. A great Batman for the time, I dare say. Okay, yes, he was a great Batman <laughs> for the time, where everything was pretty much, you know, ev- everything was funny, it was campy, it was, look at the Three Stooges and stuff. <laughs> and that, that was even era. longer ago, but yeah. I know, but it's that, like... No, it's that mentality, I understand, yes. Yeah, so it's in its own little league. I think he was great for that. Absolutely. Putting him up with, you know, the times now, you know, it's iffy, but... 
I still think he was good. Absolutely. He's he's got a little special place in my heart. I think I think that's how most people feel about the Adam West Batman is that it just has that special place in your heart because like nothing else like Batman evolved drastically as we're going to get to with these last couple of uh the the, the people on the, that are higher on the list than Adam West um this is like a you know the character evolved after after the Adam West Batman the character evolved and took on a new um a new demeanor and new element exactly like it changed it the character morphed after the adam west batman so like you said in actual comics yeah exactly so like you said i mean as far as um what it is you know as far as like trying to stack up the adam west batman with like contemporary batman hard to do obviously because it's two completely different animals um, and I think most fans probably these days especially would prefer, you know, like the darker, tougher, more mm-hmm. gritty version of Batman, myself included. Oh, um, absolutely. But that doesn't take anything away from what Adam West did at the time. And that's why I think he, he comes in so high is because we all kind of agree. I think we all kind of agree the same thing on this one is, well, that version of Batman is not our favorite version of Batman. We give all the the respect in the world to the man for for what he did and the the commitment and the the way he played that character and how into it he was you know and and yeah. for the time like that cuz cuz it's easy for us to forget cuz we weren't alive when it happened <laughs> but um but that's who batman was back then that's what batman was back then and he played that version of batman to a t he really did that vint- like i said the best best description i can give of it is it's vintage batman yeah, he, that's exactly. He's vintage Batman. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's uh, we don't have too much else to say about that. So um, we're getting we're getting toward the top here. Um, we're getting pretty close to the top here. So, um, coming in at number two on this list, we have Christian Bale, who of course played Batman in uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, ranging from two thousand five to two thousand twelve. Um, <laughs> Really, a uh, sounds like there's some technical difficulties there, or maybe I'm sorry, I was having some technical difficulties. Uh-huh. Yeah, some technical difficulties Christian... with being a douchebag. Yes, I know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but nonetheless. Sorry. So, um, obviously, uh, there's a small amount of controversy on your side surrounding this. Um, so, but here's the thing. Um, we talked to I just I just alluded to it before, but redefining a character and. Christian Bale, for a, for a few different reasons, comes in this high on this list. So a couple of the smaller reasons, I think, are um, how successful the trilogy was that he was in. Obviously, that's, we don't need to talk about that because um, it's well documented. Um, obviously, the aesthetics and, you know, with modern, uh, you know, technology and CGI and everything, the way that they can, you know, make everything much uh, much smoother and much more, uh, you know, action oriented and crazy with those movies, um, with what they have at their disposal. Um, obviously, uh, the costume, the way that they've modernized the Batman costume in this movie, um, I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, or in, you know, in all the, the Christian Bale Batman movies was pretty awesome. Um, but I think the big, and obviously, you know, another thing, a small thing, uh, that I should mention is that, of course, um, the villains that we got in these movies, most notably, obviously, the Heath Ledger Joker. Um, but, of course, the... Um, the um, Oh, my God. Um, damn. Uh-huh. Now I'm blanking on his name. Son of a bitch. I know his name. The guy who played Two-Face in The Dark Knight. Um, I'm going to kick myself. Because um, I just said what his name was like a few days ago, and now I can't remember it. Sam, help me yeah, out. I'll let you keep trying. No, help me out. I don't want to waste any more time. Aaron Eckhart. That is Eckhart. Yeah, that's what it was. So he is a very unsung hero as an incredible Two-Face. Um, and uh, obviously the the Gary Oldman, Jim Gordon, also incredible. Um, so, but aside from all that, I think the biggest reason that um, Christian Bale, for me, uh, ranks so high, and for a lot of people, honestly, I know Sam has him pretty high, um, right around here, I think, on on her yeah, side. He's number two, um, or no, no, he's two or three, three, two or three. Yeah, I had him at like one or two. I couldn't decide, and Mitch had him a little lower. So I'm gonna, in a couple minutes, give him his chance to try and 
shit on him. But, um, <clears throat> but I think the biggest reason, um, the internet kind of agrees with me. Like pretty much every every internet list on a Batman ranking that I've looked at has him at either one or two. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but I I know I've been building the hype up for this. But the biggest reason that Christian Bale is so high on this list, I think, is what I alluded to before redefining a character so love him or hate him and believe me i am no christian bale mark trust me i am not a huge christian bale fan by any stretch of the imagination um but what christian bale did for the character of batman is undeniable because yes as we're going to talk about when we get into who is inevitably, obviously, we all know who number one's going to be now, of course. Um, when we get into that, we're going to talk about the... What a the, surprise! I know, right? Um, it's, we're going to get into the, the tough guy, badass aspect of Batman, but Christian Bale did something that we didn't really see in live action for Batman before, is that he really brought to life the more darker, the more gritty, the more just just uphill struggle of Batman, you know, the, he, he really took Batman to that darker place that not really anybody had done before that. And there's a big difference between being a badass and being dark and a badass. And I, I really do think, and most people do agree actually that Christian Bale just embodied that damn near perfectly. He really did. To a lot of people's surprise, because I don't know if you guys remember this, but I'm sure Mitch does. But back in the day, there was a lot of skepticism about Christian Bale being Batman. I don't know if you remember this, Sam, or not. Oh, I do. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of skepticism about him being Batman. And um, I was one of those people, too, admittedly, once again, because like I said, I am not a huge Christian Bale fan, generally speaking. Um but but the way he redefined that character and and brought that element of of darkness and grit to the character that we hadn't really seen before in live action just I got to give it to him and not only that and as you guys know from earlier in the list this is a sticking point when talking about Batman to me too I think Christian Bale undoubtedly played the best live action Bruce Wayne that we ever got in anything um, he has what I like to call, or he had what I like to call an apathetic swagger to him. He looks the part, he has that air of playboy, of that confidence of like, yeah, I'm rich, I can buy everything I want, I'm going to use it to make all this tech to kick people's asses, so what? You know, like he just, he pulled it off so perfectly, He and the way that he he delved into the the mindset of the character about you know wanting to retire at some point as you know as a reoccurring theme is he wanted to hang it up and he wanted to um to i guess find something you know that was you know for himself personally and he couldn't bring himself to do it and you know it became somewhat of a struggle at certain points so for me, um, like I said, he's. It, I go back and forth. Believe it or not, the the honest truth is, I go back and forth between him and um, the guy who we will talk about in a few minutes, who's number one on the list, obviously, um, for number one as Batman. But I, for everything that Christian Bale has done for this character and for the franchise of Batman, I just, I gotta, I gotta give it to him. He is, he, he is incredible as Batman. Um, but I know you've been pretty quiet. Uh, well, Sam, I guess since I know Sam's going to mainly agree with me, uh, if you want to chime in um, about how you felt about the Christian Bale Batman. I mean, you may have not felt quite as strongly as I do about the Bale Batman, but I know you uh, you were a big fan as well. I was. I liked the direction he brought Bruce, mostly. Because mm -hmm. you're right, He, I think he did a great Bruce. Yeah. He, you know, he had that arrogance but it also wasn't too arrogant and he knew how to utilize his money yes in a, like they don't show that that often either yeah the philanthropy aspect that's yeah. a that's a big thing about the bail batman that kind of gave his bruce what that was another reason why his bruce wayne had that that added level of of this is just what it's supposed to be you know 
Mm-hmm. And this is and and this is really like as far as lifespans go for for Batman or or phases of Batman's life, I should say. This is kind of like Br- Christian Bale is essentially portraying Batman in his prime, essentially, right? Like this isn't like a struggling like raw Batman like you would see. Oh, he knows he knows what he is. He, he knows, knows how to do it exactly. He knows who he is. He knows what he is. He knows what he's doing. It's not a raw struggling Batman like Pattinson. It's not like a bitter old Batman like. Affleck, it's this is Batman in his prime essentially, and that is that is an awesome thing to watch. It really is. Um, I enjoyed like the you know as they stated the beginning. Yes. <laughs> how he was. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> was uh, becoming mm-hmm. Batman, and then the next two movies, he was well established. He knew what he was doing. He accepted it. Yes. And he did it well. Yes. Um, so yeah, the only thing, um, I, I don't really have too much negative. Well, the only two negatives, I guess I would, I would say, um, to me about the Bale Batman were obviously, uh, a lot of the stuff or maybe not a lot, but a a good portion of the stuff was not, you know, the most comic accurate, but that kind of feeds into them kind of taking it in that direction and, you know, making it their own. Although I am, kind of disappointed that we never really got like a proper Robin and we haven't had a proper Robin in any Batman movie since don't ever bring up that stupid. Oh, Joseph Ooh. Gordon Lovitz. <laughs> oh, I love Joseph. Go- I love him. Joseph Gordon. And Levitt, they, so I think they had so much room to give us. He would have been a great Robin, but they screwed the pooch. He would have been with... a great Nightwing. Well, yeah, but they screwed the pooch with him, but that's another story. So, Oh, you um, should keep. You, you should go by your. <laughs> John, no, forget oh. Tim Drake. It's John Blake. But that's not. But but again, that's just that movie. And there's there's mixed things about that movie, The Dark Knight Rises. But um, that doesn't reflect on Christian Bale's performance. No, it doesn't. Um, so, but yeah, the other thing is, and I know this is the thing that Mitch is going to jump on, so I'm just going to get it out of the way before he can say it, is the voice, you know, is your, you know, like he, he, and you know, it I sound like he had a cold sometimes. Yeah, and I will admit, you know, it sounded like the fucking, the, the mask was like, cho- like cutting into his voice box or something, I don't know, but you know what, he got into it, and did he take it too far? Yes. Um, but at the end of the day, everything else he did was so well that I can overlook something like, like I can overlook the fact that he exaggerated the, the gruff voice a little too much, you know, um, I can overlook that based on everything else positive he's done, um, for the character. But, uh, Mitch, you, I know you've been quiet. I know you're chomping at the bit to, uh, try and take a shit on, uh, Christian Bale. So, uh, the floor is yours. Have at it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep, knew it. <laughs> anyway, listen, Christian Bale. I won't say he didn't play a good Batman, mm-hmm. but anyone could put on a costume and do stunts and or have a stunt double and like. Anyone, anyone can be Batman. That's kind of the point of Batman. Batman's a symbol. And Christian He's Bale even person. says that, He's actually. If, if I'm not mistaken, Christian Bale's the one who says that. But go on. <laughs> well, it's only because that's how Christopher Nolan wrote it. But uh-huh. the point is... <laughs> the point is... I, I, I... I just don't see him as number two. Like, I just... I'm I'm not gonna say he played a bad Batman, but no. See, I'm actually I want to I want to raise this point. I'm actually surprised in a way that you don't think that Christian Bale should be this high on the list because Christian Bale breathed life into really the version of Batman that you personally enjoy the most. So that's why I'm kind of surprised that you don't no, think he did that, that in one movie. I That's why I'm surprised that you don't think he deserves to be as high but as he But he did is. that in one movie out of three. Still, he, it's more than a lot of he did it, others. One movie out of three, he did something I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's so Batman. Yeah. One movie out of three. All right. That doesn't tell me you belong in second place. That tells me that you and Kevin Conroy should switch places. Well, 
that too bad that's not happening but not not here anyway but um but i think to to sum that up i would say tenure i would say success i would say uh reinventing the character um and everything else that i i had said um obviously uh someone like a kevin conroy i mean there's really the only I think the only person that has more tenure with the character of Batman is probably Kevin Conroy. And if you factor in live action, that's not even true. If you would only look at live action, that's not true. Um, I guess technically uh, Affleck had three movies, although, again, as we've said many times on this already, those were not standalones. So, so... Bale is the only actor to actually have at this point, I believe, three standalone movies, a trilogy of standalone movies to himself, which, again, speaks volumes. And again, you know, he can't take all the credit for that, obviously, because everything in the Dark Knight trilogy, most, a lot of things, if not most things, were very well done um, and set up. But, you know, um, that's kind of where it stands. Um, But yeah. Um, I won't take the steam out of your sails because I know you're going to have a lot to say about um, our number one pick on the list. Um, so, yeah, um, coming in at number one, I'm sure you all know what it is at this point. Um, coming in drum at. Roll. What's that, Sam? I said do a drum roll. Uh, sure. Can you hear that? Maybe. Okay, uh, number one on the list is going to be Glenn What's-His-Face from Sam's uh, TV show that he never puts the costume on and nobody watches. You're such a jackass. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Of course, don't 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 let your heart stop, Mitch. Of course, number one, it, it has to be Michael Keaton, um, who, of course, played Batman uh, twice in... Um, the late 80s slash early 90s um, to Batman movies, um, the Tim Burton verse or whatever they call it, um, Batman. Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, I go back and forth on uh, who I think is the best Batman between um, Keaton and Bale, to be honest with you. Um, and to be completely honest with you, a lot of it is for a lot of the same reasons. So, Keaton, as we mentioned prior when we talked about West, after Adam West played Batman in the 60s, the next person to play Batman in live action was Michael Keaton in 1989. So that was over 20 years since we had had a live action Batman. So to a lot of people, Keaton, I know I've said that Adam West was like the grandfather of Batman. Keaton Keaton is like the father of Batman, essentially. So it hits a little closer. The new age father. Yes, and so it hits a little closer to home for everyone in our generation because like even though that's like right around the time all of us were being born, like the late 80s, um, that was, that like that is pretty much like ground zero for like, what we we would call like modern Batman, essentially. Michael Keaton is like ground zero for modern Batman, so this like just badass ass kicker of Batman. And so, um, yeah, I will say um, Keaton has T- Keaton did a lot of great things, and probably I would say I know I said that Christian Bale, I believe played the best live action Bruce Wayne I've ever seen, but I do have to say I think Michael Keaton played the best live action Batman that we've ever seen. So, and he would be and Keaton would kind of be like again Batman more in his prime similarly to Bale. Um he redefined the character to be um you know, not in the same way Bale did, but he redefined the character from like that campy um you know, old school, vintage, like hokey, corny Batman that Adam West played into like just a real badass ass kicker, you know? Um, so the movies he w- he played Batman in were obviously uh, very successful, although I will be the first person to tell you I'm not a big Tim Burton fan, never have been. Um, but so the aesthetics and, and some of the way things are done in pretty much everything Tim Burton does is weird for me, but nonetheless, um, I do think that, uh, the way that Keaton portrayed Batman was damn near flawless. Um, I do take a little bit of an issue with his Bruce Wayne though. I think that he was 
and I think this is where maybe like the the weirdness of like Tim Burton shines through is like I don't know the the way he did Bruce Wayne was a little weird to me like he didn't quite come across oh. what's that how I, he didn't really quite come across as like I mean yeah he came across as like a rich powerful man kind of but he he came across like in more as like CEO Bruce Wayne than he did as like a playboy to me. So, I mean, I, um, Bill got the girls. Sure. Yeah, no, he did. Absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, and I don't get me wrong. I don't hate his Bruce Wayne by any stretch of the imagination. I think his Bruce Wayne was good, but it just wasn't, it was just missing something for me, you know, and maybe like Keaton to me, like Michael Keaton got to play the, the perfect form of Batman. Yes. And I I know I'm going to give you a lot of time. So he was, he was already established. Yes. Therefore when in the two movies he was in, whether you account Jack Nicholson or whether you account, um, Danny DeVito was that also his name perfect. that played the yes. penguin. Yes, also perfect. Um, what whether you do Batman, the Batman, I'm sorry, Michelle you know, Pfeiffer, or Batman Returns. Yeah, don't forget Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you can't. My point is, whether you account for all these movies and characters, you you still have to look at the Batman. Of course, that's the whole point of this. <laughs> But what I'm saying is he plays the pinnacle of live action. He's like perfect form Batman. It's like it's like when Cell hits his even perfect form. In Bruce Batman. Wayne form. Cause oh, yeah. again, Bruce Wayne doesn't really like to be Bruce Wayne when he enters the room where there are two people that were invited to a gala he was having or whatever. We're in one of his rooms where he had like a collection set. Mm-hmm. Comments are being made. He was there with them, making the comments, laughing, joking around. And then, oh, what's your name? Oh, I'm Bruce Wayne. And the people were like, "What?" <laughs> yep. Point is, he he doesn't give a fuck about anything. Bruce Wayne. Everything yeah. he cares about is Batman. Right. So to account a character for how he plays Bruce Wayne and how he plays Batman. Yeah, I no. I feel like you can't. Sure, no, and don't get me wrong. Like, obviously, it's more important okay. to be good at being Batman. If you are Batman, it's more important to be good at being Batman than it is to be good at being Bruce Wayne. Don't I agree with that 100%, absolutely. But having said that, that doesn't mean that being Bruce Wayne isn't important because that is the duality of the character after all. Um, but obviously being Batman and being good at being Batman is more important than, than Bruce Wayne. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, he is, uh, you know, I, like I said, I give it to him. He is pretty much the pinnacle of of Batman, you know, as far as like, you know, what he is and what he does in the stage of his life that he's in. Um, I will also say another big plus of, uh, aside from like all the villains and the other casting, like there's a lot of, honestly, I didn't think about it as much, but I'm thinking about it more now. There are a lot of parallels I think you can draw between the Christian Bale Batman the way the universe is set up and why the universe is so popular as it, it same thing for the the Michael Keaton Batman as all the characters that they have you know other characters villains supporting characters the way everything is written and the way every the way the whole package is brought together um but um, but yeah, he is, um, Michael Keaton is a total badass as Batman through and through in these movies. Um, no question. And, um, yeah, he is at the top of his game. So, um, Sam, I don't know if you would like to add, I know you and, um, you and Mitch, but obviously you, of course, uh, as far as live action goes, uh, do put Michael Keaton at the top of, of your list as well. I mean, what is there to say? He was perfect. <laughs> that, that's that's why I'm asking you. 
because <laughs> I want to find I mean, out what there is to all say. Been said. <laughs> yes. When you're the, I, mean, I'm I know when you're the, the when you're, you're the, the last person for the small input. I know when you're the Kelly last one. It. When you're the last one, I know I'm. I am putting you over a barrel. I know because when you're the last one to talk, there's not a lot left to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, do you do you agree? Keaton with... is the Tobey Maguire of Batman. Pretty much, honestly, I can't disagree with that. Um, do you have anything else you want to add about the Keaton Batman, Mitch? I know he's your favorite as well. I mean, I like how he was able to produce, you know, his normal talking voice, and he kind of, when he was dealing with the public, he showed an awkwardness, but not too much. And yeah, I, I do enjoy. How he, uh, when he was Batman, mm. how, how he would kind of, you know, he would talk to you. He'd be like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But then when he was Batman, he was able to kind of do like a, you know. A pivot. Uh, yeah. n- yeah. No, but not 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 a, I'm Batman. Nothing yes. like that. <laughs> yes. It was just this downbeat baritone of like. Yes. Like oh, I'm Batman. What do you? It, it was more of like a okay. Are you ready? It was more of like a. This is him talking normal. Yeah. And then it was more of like, what do you need, Commissioner Gordon? Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. No, and he does get he gets more points over Bill for the voice. Um. The the other small thing that I want to mention um is the suit too because I think this is the like because. Keaton Batman what adds is probably to Batman's the scariness, though, what, what most people don't realize too either is to the comics, what adds to his scariness is, is his calmness mm-hmm. under these kinds he of situations. So calm, when he's yeah. staring you in your eyes and he's looking at you and he's like, tell me what I want to hear. Yeah. And if like you're like, no, he's like, he doesn't say shit to you. He breaks your bone like you break an arm, and he'll look you in your eyes, and he's like, "Do you have an answer now?" Yeah, like that's that Batman, and and that's what Keaton brought to the screen. Absolutely, yes, I would agree. No other. That's why I was kind of upset about where Pattinson was because he kind of had that like same he... demeanor. Yeah, I except feel like that one. Except that in, one time. Well, but I feel like when he came in, and you heard him douche, yeah. douche, douche, douche. You know, I kind of got a, I kind of got a like a like a cowboy vibe kind of out of that, which is which was cool because you kind of. I, I think kind of got a little bit wanted. of an Iron Man vibe out of that. Well, I mean, it almost like when his boots were like when it, you could hear his boots stomping on the ground. Uh, talking about Pattinson, it was it was kind of like a cowboy's like the spurs on their boots like clicking almost as they like walk it to a showdown. So I did appreciate that, and I will give it to you. Um, most for I mean, even though Pattinson had his moments, but the Keaton Batman, oh, which I think is why a lot of people um, think it's pinnacle, uh, feel it's pinnacle, is because of that too. Is that is he did really embody like that part of Batman, like the the calm demeanor like while he was conducting business you know he never really lost it and you know maybe that's a little bit of a thing with Bale that I would say is that maybe he got a little more emotional than you would think Batman would get in those situations but again with with that that's not really a deal breaker for me giving all that he contributed to the role um but yeah I mean Pattinson though I will I I have to say this I'm glad uh you brought it up um because I almost forgot um, was that, uh, he, he was like that most of the time. So I give that to him except for, you know, that one time, do you know what I'm talking about, Sam? Um, no. What have you done? What have you done? What have you uh, done? Like pounded on the ground, like or on the wall, like five times yelling at the Riddler. Like, yeah, he, uh, he wasn't very calm in that moment, but, <clears throat> um, you know. And the Keaton Batman would have been like. You don't know what you just <laughs> done to yourself. Exactly. So there you go. Maybe That's it's, there's a reason we're getting Keaton back. So you yes, know. yes, he is coming back for Flashpoint. Um, I think that's confirmed. So. Oh yeah, he's his suit's already been revealed, and he's been. Nice. Uh, I believe there's pictures of him on set in Toronto. Oh really? Nice. I I have not seen those, but 
Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that pretty well wraps uh, the list part of it. Um, as far as obviously the future of Batman. Right now, I think um, the future of the character is obviously with uh, Robert Pattinson, which is, you know, I, it sounds str- it feels strange to say this, but it doesn't feel like it's in bad hands. It feels like it's it's Definitely decent. Not. Um, I think hopefully one of the biggest um, one of the biggest issues they've had um, is obviously keeping actors with Batman for as long as they wanted it wanted them to. Um, so hopefully they don't have that issue. Uh, going forward anymore i know they're doing like a cool obviously you just talked about it sam a cool thing with the flashpoint where they're um bringing back uh keaton and i heard rumors that he wasn't going to be the only former batman to come back for that um but i don't think anything's confirmed yet i think other people are rumored to also come back um but yes you know clooney's on board (laughs) <laughs> well, just give him a big enough paycheck and he'll be there, you know? Uh, <laughs> that man's got enough money to get... He doesn't need it. Yeah, well, there's no such thing as too much money if you're a rich movie star, you know? Um, but yeah, so... <clears throat> yeah, I think um, it's it's an interesting retrospect looking back at, uh, you know, all the actors. And, it's, and it's, it is kind of cool because, like, the one good thing about getting a lot of actors playing the same character and, uh, you know, this is like a silver lining to not being able to really keep an actor too long usually is that you do get to see a lot of different versions of the character that you otherwise wouldn't get to see if, like, a lot of different actors hadn't played that character, you know? Um, so that is an interesting, like, we've got to see Batman at pretty much all stages of his life, you know, (laughs) like, we've gotten, like, the young raw Batman in Pattinson, we've got, like, I guess Kilmer, you could say, too, maybe was a little bit more of a younger Batman, you got, like, peak Batman, like, you know, prime of his life Batman, like, Bale, or, um, you know, Keaton, obviously, and then you have, like, the Affleck Batman, which is, like, or even the Conroy Batman, which is, like, you know, borderline old man Bruce, you know, like, the bitter old Batman, so, um, so, yeah, it's cool to, it is cool, and again, obviously, I think you guys are both bigger Batman fans than me, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a fan, and that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate, um, good content and good, um, you know, uh, acting and good portrayals of characters. So, <clears throat> and I definitely do here. Or I wouldn't have uh, wanted to do this. So, um, but yeah. So I think that uh, pretty well covers it. Uh, Sam, any any thoughts in closing? No. <laughs> Let you think. I mean, I feel like Ian Glenn should have been on this list, but I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I was also thinking about the kid that played him in Gotham, but I guess he's just more Bruce. So. Yeah, so those people weren't on the list. Those are those. I'll give them honorable mentions. I'll, no, I'm not going to give. Yeah, I'll give the kid. Screw it. So whoever that kid was, in Ian Glenn, get honorable Can't mentions. His name. They get honorable mentions for playing Bruce Wayne um, in things that not a lot of people watched. Um, but uh, but yeah, so they. But people I think, watched Gotham. What are you talking about? Uh, until it didn't it get shitty. I thought. I feel like I've read the. Uh, Gotham was kind of every three bad episodes you get a good episode. That's shitty. I I would define that as a shitty. But show it lasted like case. five seasons. So. Well, you know, if you got if you got the funding and you got enough hardcores that want to see it, I think. Well, as far as that goes, I think it was just you know getting a different retrospective on the again like it's a different perspective of a of Batman yeah. at a different point in his life, which kind of kind of sums everything up. I think. Um, yeah. But uh, Mitch, any th- any closing thoughts? <laughs> or is your no? Point? I feel like we uh, we we covered it all. Pretty well covered it. All right. So there is um there is one last thing um that I do want to uh, throw in here, and that is um there is one analysis of Batman that I think takes the cake over every other analysis of Batman. I mean, we've just sat here for almost two hours now and given our analysis of Batman, but I think there is one man and one analysis of Batman that stands head and shoulders above ours and everyone else's. And that is, of course, of course, of course, John Cena's analysis of Batman. Take it away, John. Oh, God. Take it away, John. 
There you see, Batman doesn't kill people. Because he's a pussy! He's a dark creature of the night! He's a jackass! Who wrestles with murderers dressed like clowns and throws them in prison! <laughs> so they can break out of prison and then murder more people! Real me this, how many people you think Batman's indirectly murdered by being too much of a candy ass not to kill these fools who clearly need to be smoked once and for all, you... <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. There you have it, folks. Riddle me this. Yes, I love how he throws in riddle me this, and I love how he throws in candy ass. So, um, there you have it. The expert at Batman analysis by John Cena. Um, you Is still... better now that you have that in there? I do. Are right, you still there, Mitch? you have anything uh, you'd like to add? No? <laughs> Technical difficulties? He, I wonder if he left when he heard that I was playing. Maybe <laughs> he might have. He might have left. I don't know. That's okay. Hey, can you hear me? I can Hi. hear you now. Yeah. So did you get that? Why, why would Why would you play that? Because <laughs> Peacemaker is a great show. Go watch it if you haven't. <laughs> I had oh to. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> I had to, bro. I had to. It was. Uh, it was when I saw that. Uh, that bit on that episode i was just like this is the funniest thing like i have to how how can i i have to bring this up somehow you know at some point so there so there i it shouldn't is. have been surprised to be honest with you you should you're right you really shouldn't have been but um but yeah i think that's a good place to leave it so um yeah that's it thanks for watching again everybody hope you all enjoyed please hit that like button leave a comment and or subscribe if you did enjoy share the video all that good stuff i want to thank you oh come on bro it's all in good fun um i'd like to thank my guests uh another rendition of the panel uh felts wild and michelonius for joining me to uh hash out some good old-fashioned batman so thank you guys for that problem mitch <laughs> he's gone <laughs> he's gone i'm upset Ah, it's all good, bro. It's all in good fun. <laughs> it's all in good fun, as per the usual. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's it. And Kevin uh, Conroy, number one. Kevin no. Conroy, number one. In your Kevin heart. Kevin Conroy, number one. <laughs> in your heart. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.